Taylor series. So we've been talking about Maclaurin series, and you guys are pretty good at writing Maclaurin series. We found out that the Maclaurin series of sine of x is this thing. Um, now, what we're going to do is talk about what are some of the limitations of the Maclaurin series and how the Taylor series addresses those limitations. So one thing we did was, um, that we did in a, a previous uh, video was estimating the sine of 10 using 15 terms of the Maclaurin series. So what does that mean? It means we take this series up here, this uh, Maclaurin series, and uh, we're going to have, instead of n being infinity, see here's, here's the thing about the Maclaurin series. Sine of x is exactly equal to this polynomial, but only if you have infinitely many terms. If you don't have infinitely many terms, sometimes it's a pretty good estimate and sometimes it's not. So practically speaking, we never have infinitely many terms because we ain't got that much time, even with school closed. So we're going to use a certain finite number of terms. So if we estimate sine of 10 using 15 terms of the Maclaurin series, so what that means is, so I'm estimating sine of 10, that means the x here is going to be 10, so that's the, there's the 10 there. We're saying sine of 10 equals that. And using 15 terms means means we're going to use, instead of n equals infinity, which would give us an exact amount, we're going to use n equals 15, which is not exact, but it's doable. So uh, we've done that, actually, and uh, I don't imagine you need to go look at that result, so I just pulled it up on the calculator here from before, and here's a, that summation, this summation here, and it turns out to be um, negative point... Uh, five four four one two seven two seven seven all right and um that compares to the actual value of sine of 10 that we have here for a comparison so the actual value of sine of 10 or again this calculator's estimate of the actual value of sine of 10 because the sine of 10 is irrational it can't be stated exactly in decimals at all um, but a much better estimate is negative point five four four zero two one one zero nine so you can see that uh, the Maclaurin series with 15 terms is close, but it's, it's a little far away. All right, and then uh, we found that uh, when we tried to estimate sine of 50 was the next thing we did. So we said, all right, let's estimate uh, sine of 50. So this is, you know, recap a little bit, sine of 50. If we try to estimate that using 15 terms, because this wasn't bad with 15 terms, let's try it. So we're gonna do negative one to the n. Uh, this time we're gonna do 50 to the two n minus one over 2n minus 1 factorial, and this should tell us what the sine of 50 is. So uh, we did that uh, quite a while ago, and here's what it was. Here's the, here's the summation, and what we got was negative 4.086. So we got, uh... oh, that's interesting. I didn't even notice that before. Hmm, anybody else notice that? It says negative 4.086, and I said that was wrong because... Um, because uh, the sign can't be negative 4. But look at this over here, E18. I didn't even notice that. So what we really got here is negative 4.086 times 10 to the 18th power. <laughs> so it's like way, way wronger than I imagined it to be wrong. It's super, super wrong. Okay, so why is this so wrong for sine of 50 when it was so right for sine of 10. So I showed you what the picture of uh, the Maclaurin series looked like uh, before, and so here's uh, the function sine of x, and here's, if you look at, uh, at this side of the screen, here's x minus x cubed plus x fifth over five factorial, that's our Maclaurin series that is given by this expression. So when we graph it, what we see is this line. Now, I have limited patience if I have to write these out by hand. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six terms. So that's n equals six. All right. So you can see that if I used n equals six, I would be able to estimate the sine of three pretty well. But my sine of five would be not very good, and sine of 10 would be off the charts bad. And if I tried to use that for sine of 50, it would be ridiculous. Now, if I add more terms, I still get a better estimate. That's why I could estimate sine of 10 using 15 terms instead of just six of them. But I don't have the patience to write 15 terms. I wanted to illustrate this. So how could we make our estimate of sine of 50 be better? Well, we're going to start by saying... Uh, taking, I think, some smaller numbers, because again, it's hard for me to type these all up by hand. So. One, one thing that we can do is change the center point, because the Maclaurin series is centered here at zero. 
And that's, that's one of the drawbacks of the Maclaurin series. The farther you get from zero, the worse your estimate. But what if I didn't have to have the center of this fit be at zero? What if I could have it be somewhere else? All right, so what we're going to look at now is um, suppose we want to um, estimate sine of 7. So um, we'll, we'll take a, a little bit. Again, I'm just cutting the numbers down so that we can sort of see what's going on. All right, so we're going to remember that our Maclaurin series for any function generally is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the nth derivative evaluated at 0 over n factorial times x to the n. All right, that's our standard Maclaurin series. Um, the Taylor series modifies that. Taylor series works like this. It's the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of... I wish I'm going to move that down so we can see it better. Sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the nth derivative at some value a. And this a is what's going to move that graph we were looking at off the center of 0 um, over n factorial times x minus a to the n. All right, so this is the modification, the difference between Taylor Taylor and Maclaurin. It's just instead of x, we have x minus a. Instead of fn's of 0, we have fn's of a. So if we wanted to estimate sine of 7, what we'd do is we'd choose a to be a number whose sign we know that is close to 7, just like in linear approximations. All right? So a value that I know that's close to 7 is 2 pi. I know the sine cosine of 2 pi. So we'll use, um, let's estimate um, sine of 7 using uh, a equals 2 pi. All right? So here's how you write the Taylor series. So you start just like, just like the... Um, Maclaurin series, you start with f of whatever and then f prime of whatever, but this time instead of f of 0, we're going to have f of 2 pi. That's our a. We'll get f of 2 pi, f prime of 2 pi, f double prime of 2 pi, f triple prime of 2 pi. We'll do the fourth derivative of 2 pi and the fifth derivative at 2 pi. So we'll just figure out what all those things are. And, of course, I arbitrarily chose five of them because what we really need to do is establish a pattern and then... Um, and then develop the uh, series from there. So so f of 2 pi is sine of 2 pi, f prime of 2 pi is cosine of 2 pi, f double prime of 2 pi is negative sine of 2 pi, f triple prime is negative cosine of 2 pi, f4 is sine of 2 pi, and the fifth derivative is negative cosine of 2 pi. We just got to see what all those things are equal to we get 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. Now, these coefficients happen to be the same coefficients that we had for the Maclaurin series, but that does not have to happen. If we had used, for example, uh, a equals 3 pi, then the, these signs would change. Or if we had used a equals pi over 4, then all of these would be root 2 over 2, and some of them would be positive and some of them would be negative. So... Uh, but I, that was part of my motivation choosing 2 pi, because it doesn't change the series much, okay? I still have to look at what my c sub n's are. So I'm going to have 0 over 0 factorial, 1 over 1 factorial, 0 over 2 factorial, negative 1 over 3 factorial, 0 over 4 factorial, and 1 over 5 factorial. So what these equal are 0, 1, 0, negative 1 over 3 factorial, 0, and 1 over 5 factorial. All right, now, here's the second difference. So the first difference between Maclaurin and Taylor is this. We have this a here that's not 0. The second difference is that we don't put just x to the n over here. We put x minus a to the n. So x minus a to the 0, x minus a to the first power, x minus a to the second power. This is all coming from here x minus a to the third power, x minus a to the fourth power, x minus a to the fifth power. So we can now say that sine of x equals x minus 2 pi minus x minus 2 pi cubed over 3 factorial plus, now we're up to this one already, 1 over, uh, I guess we can do uh, x minus 2 pi to the fifth power over 5 factorial minus etc. 
So in fact, in general, this is sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n of x minus 2 pi to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. Now, this expansion is also equal to sine x. Both the Maclaurin series and the Taylor series are equal to sine of x with infinitely many terms. But the Taylor series will converge more rapidly near 2 pi. So if I'm estimating a value like sine of 7 near 2 pi, um, the, the, I will need fewer finite terms in order to estimate that infinite term. So I think I have just enough time to show you what this looks like as a graph. So how does this change the picture that I had here? Well, this is our Maclaurin series. So I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to turn on... See, I wrote out here the Taylor series already. See the minus 2 pi's over there? Turn that on. And see what it does? You have the same polynomial, but it's shifted over. So that if I wanted to do sine of 7, I would have really good agreement. Whereas with the Maclaurin series, if I'm trying to do sine of 7, I will have terrible agreement. But with the, uh, with the um, Taylor, I have very good agreement at, t at n equals 7. Uh, at, at x equals 7. All right, and that that's all with n equals 6, so it's a very small n, but it sort of illustrates what this does. By the way, you can also see what happens between these two is if you look at these functions in terms of transformations, this function is just a horizontal shift of the function above it. Now, that doesn't always happen with... Um, with Taylor and Maclaurin series, it's particular to the sine function because the sine function is periodic. So here's Taylor at 2 pi, here's Maclaurin, which is really a Taylor at 0, and Taylor at 2 pi. Okay, so we'll look at uh, how that estimate improves uh, our value for sine of 7 next.